If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater. Before we begin this special program on Jehovah's Witnesses, I thought I'd let our viewers know about all the free resources our ministry offers to those who need help in dealing with the false and cultic religion of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, known as the Jehovah's Witnesses. I myself have never been a Jehovah's Witness, but I have had to deal with them on a theological and historical level since I became a born-again evangelical Christian back in 1981. To learn more about my own background and to hear my testimony of how I became a Christian, please see the following two videos. D&D Dungeon Master Testimony, Dungeons & Dragons Wargaming, Violent Video Games, and wasting time. I was a dungeon master, so that's what that video is about. And right in the middle of my dungeon, I became God got a hold of me and made me into a Christian. And also, you can hear my testimony at Evangelism and Apologetics, Part 1, Origins of Christian Answers. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Now, getting back to the subject of free resource materials to help our viewers that may have family, friends, or themselves caught in the web of watchtower deception. Please notice the following. Our first major free resource to help those that need it can be found on our YouTube channel, C Answers TV, which stands for Christian Answers Television, where we currently have almost 600 videos and counting on biblical theology, doctrine, comparative religions, creation science, and apologetics. However, the main reason I want you to go there is to find our playlist located there called Dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses Watchtower Society. Once you arrive on our YouTube channel, just scroll down past the Supernatural Bible Prophecy video, then the recent uploads playlist, and the popular uploads playlist and finally you'll reach our jehovah's witness playlist as you see here then be careful to click on the title dealing with jehovah's witnesses watchtower society which will turn blue as you move your mouse on it do not click on the videos or you will not be able to see the entire playlist all at once clicking on the playlist title will bring up a screen with all our available videos on the Jehovah's Witnesses, as you see here. Our video, Debate, Larry Wessels versus Two Jehovah's Witnesses at a University Study Center, has been extremely popular on YouTube, as it already has close to 360,000 views at the time of this recording. Another popular video of ours is Jehovah's Witnesses, Deceived Deceivers, number four. Embarrassing questions for Jehovah's Witnesses. Can demons repent? With 79,641 views at the time of this recording. And the Jehovah's Witnesses Fraudulent Bible, evaluating the New World Translation, verse by verse, with over 20,000 viewings. Viewers may find the testimony of a mother and her children intriguing. On the video, personal testimony, my kids were trapped in the Watchtower Society's Jehovah's Witnesses. Besides these, we have many other videos on the JWs. This is to say that all these videos are at the free disposal of our viewers at any time via YouTube. If you are in need of free printed materials, we have plenty to provide you with. For example, Besides our newsletter called Jehovah's Witnesses Deceived Deceivers, we have an assortment of free tracts we can mail you 
if you so desire, free of charge. For instance, as you see here, are blood transfusions a violation of God's law? Many Jehovah's Witnesses have died or have caused their children to die because they refuse to give much-needed blood transfusions. He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Jehovah's Witnesses and the Gospel of the Resurrection. Key biblical information there. Who changed Jehovah to Lord? A true Christian presentation to Jehovah's Witnesses. You get a lot of excellent Bible verses refuting their various belief systems. A gospel test for Jehovah's Witnesses. The world's most dangerous book. This is talking about the Jehovah's Witnesses translation, their fraudulent translation of the uh, Bible. It's called the New World Translation. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness uttereth lies. This, of course, talking about the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Why the name Jehovah's Witnesses? Destroying the mediatorship of Christ. Do Jehovah's Witnesses really benefit from, quote, one mediator between God and man? The word, who is he, according to Spiritism? The straw men of the Watchtower Society. This is a very useful track because it deals with a lot of their uh, Jehovah's Witnesses' favorite proof texts to try to argue for their strange Bible doctrines. Charles Taz Russell disfellowshipped. In fact, this track will show you how if the very founder of Jehovah's Witnesses were around today, the Jehovah's Witnesses would throw him out and disfellowship. All right, here's a track that's very useful, especially for our Bible students out there. The Deity of Jesus Christ According to the Scriptures. Now, I actually made a uh, YouTube video out of this track, and it has currently over 100,000 views on YouTube. Uh, very useful. It gives you all the Scripture references to who Jesus is. And uh, you'll find this very handy and a good refutation of Jehovah's Witness doctrine. All right, here's a track that's, uh, well, it's not really a track, but it's a, it, it goes on a doorknob. You could actually take this and put it on a neighbor's doorknob or your own doorknob or whatever you want to do. But it says, have Jehovah's Witnesses recently come to your door? And this is made to be put on a doorknob uh, when they're going through the neighborhoods and stuff. And it kind of just warns your neighbors uh, about what the Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching and the, the things they try to hide from people. So uh, I will send that to you free. And then here's another one that's in Spanish. Solo un Dios o más. And this is a, a Spanish track dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses to help your Spanish-speaking friends. And, of course, that's uh, free of charge along with all these tracks at no cost. And all you have to do is simply email us at seeddebater at AOL.com and provide us with a postal mailing address. And we will be happy to send this literature to you free of charge. We have never been in this Christian ministry to make money. Unlike so many TV religious hucksters out there today with their personal jets and multi-million dollar real estate properties, we care about the spiritual welfare of people, not whether we can get their money. With all this said, we will now proceed to our main presentation. I'm Larry Wessels of Christian Answers. I'm the director, and this is Christian Answers Presents. I want to thank you for being with us here today, and I'm with a very special guest and friend of mine who I've known for over 30 years now, I think. Uh, Cheeky Estrada. Cheeky, it's great to have you here on the program. I really appreciate it. That wonderful smile. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, our show today 
uh, believe it or not, you know, our, our ministry, our YouTube ministry has over 647 videos. One of those videos actually has her on it already. And, uh, but the only problem is it's in Spanish. Uh, people who uh, want to know more about that, and our subject today is Jehovah's Witnesses. Many of you out there have had Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking on your door, particularly on Saturdays. Maybe you're, you know, around them late morning, all of a sudden there's a knock on your door, doorbell rings, you know, and maybe you're watching TV or washing the dishes or something. You go up there and there's these two Jehovah's Witnesses holding briefcases usually like these. I just have to bring two of mine with me, which I'll demonstrate a little bit more in a little while. Uh, but uh, so they're there to give you some Watchtower magazines, some Awake magazines. They're there to try to talk to you about issues about God and things of that nature. And uh, unfortunately, even as a child, I remember my mom used to let him in. She was kind of uh, just lonely. My dad, dad's at work all day. And uh, so she would let him in. And I still remember him at our kitchen table talking to my mom on, on like a weekly basis. They'd come over every week at the same time. And she would do studies with them and all that kind of stuff. And of course, back then when I was just a little kid, I didn't know anything about religion or any of that stuff. So uh, I just kept to my toys and didn't worry about all that religion stuff. So. And you know how it is, but now we want to talk about Cheeky. She's a she's got a, a, a special case here, especially dealing with this particular religion of Jehovah's Witnesses, which we're going to discuss in our, our little video here. Uh, she's already done one video on Jehovah's Witnesses. It's all in Spanish, as I said. In fact, uh, those of you who uh, want to want to hear that video, there it is on your screen. It's called Spanish version: False Jehovah's Witness doctrines, las doctrinas de los testigos. De Jehovah. De Jehovah. Ah, very good. She she's from Guatemala. She she speaks very fluent and excellent Spanish. So we'll hear a little bit more of that as we go into this show. But the whole show is not going to be Spanish, like it was here in this particular video. So it's going to be harder for me because English is my second language. Right, that's your second. Spanish is your first. So. But it'll be easier for me because <laughs> English is my first and only language. Although for a while there, back when I was in college and high school, I was almost fluent in Spanish. Good but then you. when you don't practice it for like over 40 years, you lose it. You just, you know, you just, just kind of disappear. So I'm going to have to depend on you for getting me through the Spanish stuff. <laughs> okay. So by the way, folks at home, uh, I wanted to let you know, and you're seeing it on your screen, we actually have a playlist on our YouTube channel with 27 videos. And you're seeing it there. It's called Dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses, Watchtower Society. 27 videos starting with Who's Knocking, number two, Jehovah's Witness, Hidden History, Spiritism, Racism, Doctrines of Demons. Now, I put that in a number one slot because, in my opinion, of all these 27 videos, that one is the most informative and the best that you can watch. Uh, no, no aspersions to you, Cheeky. You know, your Spanish one's good, but not everybody <laughs> speaks Spanish like you do. So, uh, But that one is my favorite of all these simply because... I have, I have an extensive Jehovah's Witness library, which we'll see shortly in these briefcases of Jehovah's Witness books going back over 100 years. And the Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the governing body, define the word lie as not telling the truth to someone who's entitled to it. That's a quote from their Aid to Bible Understanding book. Not telling the truth to someone who's entitled to it. So, uh, just a reference from my notes here, and to give a little back, background to that, they, uh, they consider people like myself as an opposer. They, have, they class me as an opposer. And uh, opposers are someone that you're not supposed to talk to your son or even associate with, and you should get away from them immediately. And uh, it talks about uh, here in this quote, they, they consider me an enemy you know, of, of the true Christian religion. And I'm quoting the Watchtower here from the Watchtower, July 15, 1961, page 420, they say, Then in order to hate what is bad, a Christian must hate the person with whom the badness is inseparably linked. So you don't only hate the bad teaching they're giving you, but you've got to hate the person because he's the one that's inseparably linked with that badness. Okay? And then, like I said, the Watchtower, July 15, 1961, page 420, and then to back it up, they say, how are Jehovah's Witnesses to hate? Now, this is coming from Watchtower, October 1st, 1952, page 599. 
how are Jehovah's Witnesses to hate? Okay, it's, they say, we must hate in the truest sense, which is to regard with extreme and active aversion, to consider as loathsome, odious, filthy, to detest. Okay, so obviously, I do not, being an opposer in their, in their theology, I do not rate being entitled to the truth under their definition of what a lie is. So I, that's what I always get when I'm talking. <laughs> well, we've got another appointment. You know, we, we really must go. You know, which is not true. But yeah, they don't have another appointment. They just don't want to talk to me anymore. Uh, yes. What do you think about Well, they, uh, uh, well, you got to remember here, you're dealing with people who you can show them something point blank like that. Uh, in fact, it's even... Uh, in fact, it's even on here. But didn't Jesus say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you? Matthew 5, 43-44. Yes, says the watchtower, that is true. But when a person persists in opposing their teachings, they say, da-da-da-da-da. What well, I just quoted you all a minute ago. Uh, so, it's the, the classic rationalization. You've got a verse that, but you're going to find a way to get around it. You know, and they do this with a, a ton of verses as we probably don't have time to go into and all those things. But, Anyway, to, to continue what I was saying and to get back to Ross's question here, uh, I saw time was up. The, the Lord was rapidly closing my opportunity because these others were trying to drag him off. And I said, well, just before you go, and I finally opened my briefcase. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to show you. We've been standing here for about 20 minutes talking about these things, false prophets. What about the guy with the pyramids? Uh, what about God living in the star system, Pleiades on this planet or, or star Alclone? And, and all these other teachings that we were going over, ain't demons being saved. Well, at that point, with the other ones tugging on your arm, but they did hang in there for a minute, and I handed them these books. Here's one by their very founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The time is at hand. If you want a good joke on that, read uh, Luke 21.8. <laughs> and then remember, remember this, this title of, uh, of uh, Charles Taz Russell's uh, book here. But I handed them this book and showed them with not that much time here, but I, uh, I guess for the sake of the tape, I could give you a couple of quotes here. I handed him this, and I, I showed him where uh, Charles Taz Russell predicted the end of the time, end times in 1914. This is this book is from 1909. He's the very founder of their organization, and as we will look in a, in their uh, brief history here in the lecture outline in just a second. But uh, he states in here on page. 76. In this chapter we present the Bible evidence proving that the full end of the times of the Gentiles, i.e. the full end of their lease of dominion, will be reached in A.D. 1914. And that, that date will be the, the farthest limit of the rule of imperfect man. And he goes through all these things talking about how God's going to set up his kingdom and overthrow you know, these earthly kingdoms that we have here. On page 98, he says, True uh, is expecting great things to claim as we do, that within the coming 26 years, all present governments will be overthrown and dissolved. Uh, but we are living in a special and peculiar time, the day of Jehovah, in which matters culminate quickly, and it is written, a short, a short work will the Lord make on the earth. And then going down the page here a little bit, we consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdoms of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished at the end of A.D. 1914. And then I think it's on page 101, although I didn't get the cross-reference. Yeah, he says right here, uh, the kingdom of God will be established. This is on page 101. He says that it is pointed out in prophecy as due to begin the exercise of power in 1878 and that the battle of the great day of God Almighty, Revelation 16:14, will end in A.D. 1914 with the complete overthrow of Earth's present rulership is already commenced. And, uh, you know, it's basically talking about, you know, that great day of Armageddon and things. Uh, and this kind of shook him up because what, what happened was I started telling right off because I could see times running out. Everything we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes was all Watchtower doctrine. It was all taught by the Jehovah's Witnesses. And all that time they were condemning all these teachings of being of the devil, fall. So, see, but I had been able to do it by asking questions and letting them give me answers to those questions. But see, I kind of controlled the conversation by asking the questions. 
and let them tell me. And it, you know, you could start to see them shake and get nervous and everything because these weren't some photo reprint of some book. I mean, these are the actual books. The time is at hand from his uh, studies in the scripture. In fact, uh, Charles Taz Russell had said that if you, if you don't read, you, you can't really read the Bible alone. You must have his studies in the scriptures. Otherwise, you'll go into darkness within two years. So I showed him that. I showed him uh, this book by their second president, uh, also by the Watchtower Society, uh, uh, it's called Reconciliation, and on page 14, uh, Judge Rutherford, who wrote this book, who was the president of the Watchtower Society, taught, but the greatness and size of other stars or planets is small when compared with the Pleiades' importance, because the Pleiades is the place of the eternal throne of God. That's page 14, and you should have, that the Jehovah's Witness is trying to break it up, had this book in her hand yesterday, and she read that, and you could, sometimes you can tell when something got through. It, it shook her up. She handed the book back to me quickly and tried to get the rest going out. But, uh, you know, I, the point was made because it was right there. And, uh, and then all these other things we we're talking about. I pulled out this book, Angels. I've been talking about demons can be saved. Once again, it's a Watchtower publication. Uh, Joe's, uh, their second president, uh, uh, Judge Rutherford, had declared that the, the Holy Spirit had ceased in its operation and power in 1918. Okay? And now all, all direction from God, coming from Pleiades, I guess, was because uh, he had stated before that it took the Holy Spirit about 18 or 10 days to get to the earth from where God was. Because they don't believe the Holy Spirit is God. They believe it's just a, a power force like electricity. You know, but I've often wondered when Jesus says, uh, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you're gu guilty of an eternal sin. But I've often wondered, how do you blaspheme a power beam, you know, or <laughs> electrical current? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But anyway. And Jehovah's Witnesses cannot change their history. It's set in stone. They try to hide it, but they can't escape it. You can run, but you can't hide. Amen. And that's what, that's what these, these briefcases are all about. Uh, but uh, I would encourage anyone to go to that video because if you don't have an extensive old library of Jehovah's Witness books that they try to run from, uh, this video, I put it in video form where you see all these books. They're there one after another after another. You're looking at the actual pages and that saves you the trouble of actually having all these books like I do. In fact, they're getting harder to get these days. The, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses do with their old books with, like the Muslims did with a lot of their old Qurans, burn them. <laughs> they're, they're causing more trouble than they are good. You know, just get rid of them. Uh, so uh, anyway, I encourage you to watch that particular video because it will it covers A to Z on Jehovah's Witnesses wow. using their own literature. Now this gets us back to why you're here. Okay, now I want you to uh, tell the viewing audience, remember that's your camera when you're talking to them, uh, about, uh, about uh, where you were in your life and how suddenly the Jehovah's Witnesses came along. Of course, I um, come from a Catholic background, and I was wondering about God and whether God is true, God is real, uh, what's our relationship with God, and totally confused, not going, not having anybody to go to or any place to go to, and then that knock on the door, and the very nice, lovely friendly Jehovah Witness that are ready to spend their time with you and and take you through the scriptures and and the watchtower and awakening and show you how important God is in your life and it just sounded like a dream came true. In fact, uh, one of the books that gave you is that little red one there. Uh, that one's in Spanish. What does that say? Usted puede vivir para siempre en el paraíso de la tierra. You now, what does that mean in English? You can live forever in a paradise and earth. So they're not only giving you these Watchtower and Awake magazines, they're giving you books like this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And they're sitting there with you doing these studies. And they also give you their Bible version. Ah, so you got a New World Translation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We'll look at mine. I've got one with me right now, but we'll talk about that a little bit. I don't have it anymore. But oh, okay. <laughs> so, how long did you study with these Jehovah's Witnesses? Um, maybe for a year and three months. And when now, I... when was this in your life? 
Uh, how old were you about that time? Uh, 29 and a half years old. 29 and a half. 30 and a half years old. Yes, uh, and you were about a year, year and a half with the Job's Witnesses every, whether they come once a week. Yeah, and sometimes even more, and I used to now have personal friends and go yeah. visit them. And Did you ever go over to their kingdom hall? Oh, gosh, many, 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 many times. Really time, but, but you never took the step during all this time of actually becoming a Jehovah's Witness. You didn't go through their process of actually becoming a member of a kingdom hall or anything. It's not that clear in my mind anymore, but it's not so easy because you cannot pray. They mm -hmm. have to pray for you. Mm -hmm. We're talking now over 30 years ago when all this is going on. Yes. Okay. And so it's not really only your decision. There has to be steps to become a Jehovah Witness. Mm -hmm. And then you have to stop celebrating um, holidays. And I did. Oh, you mean you gave up Christmas? I gave up Christmas. <laughs> what about Easter? I gave up Easter. <laughs> yeah, I was a give it up -er. okay. And my children were hating it. Oh, yeah. Um, what about birthdays? You didn't give up the birthdays, did you? Uh, for a year I did, for oh, a year, wow. because I really wanted to be accepted, and it sounded awesome and biblical. And but your kids never accepted that. No, my no, They're going to keep those birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> I want that present. And the Christmas. <laughs> and the Easter Bunny. So, yeah, so I became friends with some of them and visited at their houses, went to the kingdom hall with them. I was very close to a Jehovah Witness and very happy to have found them um, when um, a new person came to work where I used to work. Okay, so it's your job, a new worker comes in, and now you're trying to share some of the stuff you've learned from the Jehovah's Witnesses with her, but apparently she wasn't too happy about that. She was a very strong Christian. She's still actually married to a missionary. Uh -huh. and missionary? They, mm -hmm, they yeah. do missions. Uh -huh. To a missionary and so she was very concerned about me and I was mean to her mm -hmm. and I will teach you're getting her. frustrated because she wouldn't listen to you or accept what you're trying to teach her but then I will be mean and I will mm -hmm. make jokes about Christianity oh really and, oh I was oh okay. because of all the stuff that Jay does it's okay I got mm -hmm. it I know what the, I know what you're talking about and so you know and and I laugh of her and I thought oh my dear you're just really lost and no don't worry there is no hell you won't go to hell there's no mm. hell to go to mm. it's just like if you're sleeping yeah forever yeah. soul sleep that they teach and all that so. and so um but she was a she is a real christian her name is fiorella grego i mm. will never forget her <laughs> and how she, long did this go on between you to. For many months, for many, many, many months. four or five months. And so finally, you drove her nuts to where she called somebody in. Well, she went to she went to uh, she went to some reunion, and you were outside talking about Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh yes. And then she went to meet you, and I now I know that she told you about me, but she came to work saying, "Oh, my friend Larry, da 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 da," and I just thought that you guys were best buddies. And so I'll agree to talk to her friend Larry, who I didn't like at all. <laughs> you know, it's funny in my mind's eye, I still see that first day kind of walking up as she's getting ready to introduce us and everything. And it, uh, but she had already explained to me in advance what I'm getting ready to run into here. So I yeah, was, I was I'm, prepared. Because I'm mean. <laughs> And, and you, and as I recall, you really started putting me through the ringer like you had done her. Oh, no, no. I honestly thought, okay, Jehovah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to teach this crazy guy <laughs> that believes in Jesus why he shouldn't. Right. And so I was going to teach you all those That's right. biblical you're gonna teach me. You're going to teach me a lesson. Many. So, <laughs> so, so uh, there we are at the, the, the school where you were working. And uh, just for the sake of the audience at this moment, I want to, on the screen, I'm showing the major doctrines of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So I want the people to know what you're about to teach me. And uh, here's what Cheeky was about to teach me all about. And uh, you can see there under C, it says major doctrine of Jehovah's Witnesses. says, number one, denial of the Trinity. Number two, denial of the personage of the Holy Spirit. Number three, denial of the deity of Jesus Christ. Four, denial of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Five, denial of the, vis of the visible second coming of Jesus Christ. Six, denial of the existence of hell, which you referenced already. Number seven, denial of man's eternal soul. Eight, denial of a heavenly home for all believers. Nine, rejection of blood transfusions. Ten, rejection of the cross as the instrument of Christ's death. Eleven, rejection of Christmas, Easter, birthdays, and other holidays. And twelve, rejection of human government and flag saluting. So, as we meet for the first time, all these kind of doctrines are whirling around in your head. And uh, you are convinced that by this time, you're not an actual Jehovah's Witness yet, but you're actually at the point where you believe everything they've been teaching. Everything. Every last word, right? So the people at home have just seen now all these doctrines. And what I've said many a time on many of my videos, I said, if you just study the Jehovah's Witnesses, because they're wrong on almost so many essential doctrines, so many key doctrines you need to believe in order to be a Christian. Uh, if you just learn how to refute them, you're pretty much good for the Muslims, the, the Mormons, the, the, the Hindu, all the rest of the, the religions out there. Because you, you'll already know how to defeat all their arguments. Because if you know how to, to defeat biblically a Jehovah's Witness, you're good for everybody else at the same time. Because they may not have all the same false doctrines that Jehovah's Witnesses do, but they have a lot of the same ones. Because some of the false doctrines overlap in these different false religious systems. Right. And I, it comes in handy. So I've always told the uh, up-and-coming Christian apologists that want to get into the counter-cult evangelism field, uh, start with the Jehovah's Witnesses. They go wrong on just about every essential doctrine. So if you can learn how to biblically refute them, you're pretty much set for all, all the rest of them that are out there right. because there's overlap in some of those false doctrines that they teach. Okay, so uh, we meet, Phil introduces us, and then we start getting into it. You're starting to try to school me. Um, <laughs> what, you know, what do you remember? I mean, you know, it's 30 years ago, so you don't remember a lot of it. Neither I've forgotten a lot of it too. But uh, what what do you recall the most about our initial encounter there at the school? Well, I know about um, Jesus being created according to Jehovah's Witnesses. According to the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, because. Uh, he was the arch uh, was archangel the Michael. Born. Yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, and I also show you many things that the Watchtower supported, mm -hmm. and um, I remember that your approach to me is started with the prophecies, mm -hmm. and and uh, and I totally went crazy <laughs> because I just I just. Uh, they, they hadn't shown me any of that. In fact, uh, for viewers at home, once again, you can see uh, Cheeky's referencing to false prophecy. You can see here, number one, 1916, World War I would end in a glorious outcome Messiah's kingdom. That's from the Watchtower reprints, uh, September 1st, 1916, page 5951. See 1920, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be resurrected and living on earth by 1925. That's from millions now living will never die, pages 89 and 90. Also 1922, the date 1925 is even more distinctly indicated by scripture, the Watchtower, uh, September 1st, 1922, page 2621. 1940, Armageddon is very near, the Informat, uh, uh, May 1940, page one. 1941, Armageddon is surely near, from their book, Children, page 366. 1968, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, the millennium, will run parallel with the seventh millennium of man's existence, which is to start in the fall of 1975. Life everlasting in the freedom of the sons of God, page 2930. And that's another Jehovah's Witness book. And just for the sake of the viewing audience out there, you know, I have these briefcases that are always sitting around in my office at home. And I keep these briefcases in my office for whenever the Jehovah's Witnesses are going through the neighborhood, and they usually travel in groups. They'll fan out. Two will go down this street, two will go down this street, two will go on the next street over, uh, and so forth. And so whenever they happen to come to my house, and then they're getting ready to leave to go, I just go with them. I get, get, my, I get my briefcase, and it's, it's stocked with things like this. Questions for Jehovah's Witnesses, which comes in very, very handy. 
on a lot of, and it's got a lot of preprint re, reprints from actual Jehovah's Witness literature in there. It's it's got like books like this by the, the Watchtower Society, which I've marked up for quick reference for myself. This particular book by Jehovah's Witness is written in the 1930s, Angels, by their second uh, president of the of the Watchtower, uh, Judge Rutherford. He said that even demons will be saved. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and then all these other old Jehovah reconciliation, uh, which which uh, here it, on page 14 of this book, I have my little notes in the front, so I can get to things very quickly. Uh, there in this Jehovah's Witness book, it says that God lives in the Pleiades. So God is living over here in this uh, star system, the Pleiades. Uh, and then you just go through one Jehovah's Witness book after another, which I have here. The Divine Plan of the Ages, where he's predicting the end of the world based on the ancient Egyptian pyramids. And, uh, which is funny about this particular book is, uh, and this is another reason why I mentioned that first video on our playlist on YouTube, the one about the hidden Jehovah's Witness history. I have taken all these books uh, that are actual old Jehovah's Witness books that were printed years ago. Now, what year do you see down there. Oh, you need your glasses? <laughs> yes. uh, well, that, that year is 1902. 1902. That's over a hundred years ago. Uh, and this particular Jehovah's Witness book, The Millennial Dawn, it kind of fell out, but this is part of the book. Now, you have a fold-out sheet in there, and what you, oh, this is the wrong side. I was, here on this, what does that look like to you? Pyramids? Pyramids. Oh, yeah. That's the Egyptian pyramids. And they, they, they determine when the end of the world is based on the Egyptian pyramids. Because you measure how high it is, and that's what all this stuff is, by uh, cubits and everything, as they explain here. And then they can come out with the end of the world, when the, when the world's going to end based yeah. on the Egyptian pyramids. I've often asked Jehovah's Witnesses, I say, well, were the Egyptians Christians? or Why would they know this stuff? You know, I thought they were a pagan culture. Uh, here I've got a, a kingdom interlinear of uh that the Jehovah's witness put out in greek uh and, but they contrast their greek with their own new world translation bible which you had a copy at one point mm -hmm. but what's funny and well i love this purple people eater as i call it that the watchtower puts out is that it actually refutes and contradicts their own bible translation from the greek they don't have greek scores right <laughs> right okay. they don't in fact uh, in here what's uh, interesting i think i have a a picture and of course, if y'all check that other video, we have everything I'm mentioning covered. But now look at the look at the translation committee. Now it tells you who who worked on it. See that? Mm -hmm. None of these dudes understood New Testament Greek or Old Testament Hebrew. And uh, uh, it's interesting they put out a Bible translation, which is a complete complete perversion of what the actual Scripture says. But uh, there they are, right for everybody to see. Uh, and so, anyway, so I've got, I've got this, this kind of information that I'm sharing with you. Let me put this, let me put this aside. Ugh. Let me bring up this other one. This is even a bigger one. The other briefcase has even more Jehovah's Witness stuff in it. And then I've got a whole library at home also. Wow. But here, see now, here's, here's the original 1950 New World Translation. Wow. This is an actual first edition of the Jehovah's Witness Bible, and I have a copy of it. And then I've got a bunch more of these old Jehovah's Witness books spread throughout here. In fact, there's that picture of those guys again. But this thing is just packed. And when I have a lot of fun when I follow Jehovah's Witnesses around in the neighborhood, because usually when I bring my briefcases with me, and I follow around like with, with their briefcases, I, I think the last several times I've done it with them in my neighborhoods, where I've been when they come to my house, they usually all jump in their cars and leave within 20 minutes. <laughs> and, and as they're driving off, I say the same thing all the time. And that is, if the, you had the truth, you wouldn't be running away. You would stay here and talk to me about the Word of God. But instead, they just jump in their cars and take off. I've been at the University of Texas campus with the same thing. I take this down there and uh, they used to set up their table on the UT campus. So I would go down there while they're there and start showing them all these books like I did with you. And uh, lo and behold, usually within about 20 minutes, 
Oh, it's time for us to go. They pack up everything and leave the well, campus. The Jehovah Witnesses have forbidden the people to hear people that is telling them things that are contrary mm -hmm. to what they teach. Right. Now, here you are not doing what they should be doing because you were battling me. I know. You were fighting me. But what do you think was happening as you were trying to prove all this stuff? Now, there must have been a reason why you didn't turn away. I mean, you're, you're really mad at me, right? Yes. But there's something that kept you in the game. Now, what was that, even though you're upset? Well, because you were showing me the books that they have written, the prophecies that they have said, and they have not become true. And then, well, went to the Bible where it says that if the prophecies does not come true, they, right. they're false prophets. And so it was like, I feel like my castle was crumbling. But I somehow wanted to keep, keep it fighting. alive. Keep fighting. And so I will come with another question and right. with another question. And so then we start talking about theology. Mm -hmm. And you then know. we got into the battle on those doctrines I already showed the audience. Yes. And uh, so, but now we couldn't talk all day because you were at work at that time. Right. So you did have to deal with your kids that you're watching and all that stuff. So we had to end it at some point. And usually, I never hear back from a Jehovah's Witness. After one encounter, it's like they suddenly disappear and they're gone forever. But that didn't happen in your case. I, in fact, I remember being at home one day and you actually called me on the phone. I kept calling you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember that. I said, I'm at home in South Austin and the phone rings. I pick it up and it's you. And, I, you know, and most Jehovah's Witnesses, they're gone. Uh, they, one, one time and that's enough for them. So... Well, but I you had more questions. Well, and um, you wanted to declare I, things. I guess that I can say that I have more questions. But now that I understand Christianity, mm -hmm. I I believe that um, the Lord had mercy of me. Yes. And He wanted me to keep hearing mm -hmm. because He was gonna take the veil out of my. So, eyes. in other words, it goes back to what Jesus said: that the, the Father will draw all men unto Myself. Men, of course, being a generic term, meaning men and women. Yeah. So in that, you were in the stage at that point through this encounter where God the Father is actually drawing you to His Son, but you didn't realize it at the time. You were just mad at me, and you wanted to keep reasserting what you had taught, were yes. taught by it was true, yeah. and you were going to somehow prove it to me. But I will show you a watchtower, and then you will bring me an older watchtower <laughs> that was saying the contrary of what that watchtower was saying. <laughs> and I just... Uh, that started messing up the boat, didn't it? That boat started oh, getting rocked pretty bad. It was horrible. About the capsize. The flickering flashlight of the so-called new light of the Jehovah's Witnesses the Watchtower Society emphasizes that they are a progressive organization blessed with spiritual insights from God. They call these insights new truths. Members are encouraged to keep abreast of present truth and to adjust their thinking when old truth changes. They are then encouraged to embrace new light or new truths called enhanced understanding progressive understanding, progressive truth, or progressive knowledge. Whichever way you slice it, members are expected to believe the new truth and teach it, even if it contradicts former truth or is a reversal to a previously held viewpoint. This is very similar to the Muslim doctrine of abrogation in Islam, which we have videos on. The society likens their changes in viewpoint to a boat that tacks moving side to side, but always moving forward. Most of us have traveled in a boat that, pushed about by the waves, didn't always move forward in a straight line. But tossed about or not, if the boat had something to propel it, we eventually got to where we were going. Using the society's own tacking rationale, let's look and see if their teachings about the men of Sodom have truly moved forward progressively helping members to an enhanced understanding. As you read the quoted statements below, ask yourself, which is the actual scenario? Tacking or reversal to a previously held viewpoint? The Sodomites will, will not be resurrected. Watchtower, July 1879, page 8. The Sodomites will be resurrected. Watchtower Magazine, June 1st, 1952, page 338, 
the men of Sodom will not be resurrected. So approximately 73 years pass and they change their viewpoint. But this is fine because in this case, it truly could be said to be progressive understanding because it has changed. Except that, Watchtower, August 1st, 1965, page 479. The men of Sodom will be resurrected. Hmm, no side-to-side -side tacking here, but a complete return to a viewpoint held 85 to 86 years earlier. So at this juncture, it cannot be said to be progressive, rather regressive. But did they finally have it right? Watchtower, June 1st, 1988, page 31. Men of Sodom will not be resurrected. 23 years pass, and nope, two complete reversals spanning over 100 years, and they still haven't gained or presented any additional insights to members. The Jehovah's Witness publication Insight, Volume 2, 1988, page 985, Men of Sodom will be resurrected. The Jehovah's Witness Revelation book, 1988, page 273, Men of Sodom will not be resurrected. Now that's interesting. In the same year, in one publication of theirs, they said the men of Sodom will be resurrected. But in that same year, in another one of their publications, they said men of Sodom will not be resurrected. You can live forever in paradise on earth, published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in 1982, which said the men of Sodom will be resurrected. And then... You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth, second edition, published by the Watchtower and Tract Society in 1989, seven years later, it says, The men of Sodom will not be resurrected. Wow, lightning fast reversals, but no progressive. The light is getting brighter. Truth. Merely a replay of will, will not. Recycled information is not progressive truth. When the society claims that a teaching that reverts to a previous viewpoint is in actuality new light or a new spiritual truth, this is incorrect and dishonest. While it may be new to a new generation of members, it is old recycled information. As we see here, we have the Aid to Bible Understanding, which is a Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York Incorporated publication of the International Bible Students Association, Brooklyn, New York, USA. This particular publication is coming in 1971, as you can see there by the copyright. Now, a lot of times I like to refer to this particular Jehovah's Witness book as the aid to Bible misunderstanding. But anyway, let's go here to page 1519 of this particular publication. And once there on page 1519, looking down on the lower bottom of the right-hand column, we see this book makes a reference to the men of Sodom. It says, Sodom and Gomorrah were everlastingly destroyed as cities, but this would not preclude a resurrection for people of those cities. Jude 7, Matthew 10, 15, compare Luke 11, 32, 2 Peter 2, 6. So as you can see here, this particular publication of the Jehovah's Witnesses, says that the men of Sodom would be resurrected. So just another, are they or are they not? Yeah, and, and somewhere in there, just on the sheer weight of all their own literature, their own false prophecies. Yes, that was true. Uh, it was through their books. And, and this is a tip for you uh, up-and-coming Christian evangelists out there that want to reach these people in, that are trapped in these false religions. I usually start with a witness like this to destroy their own they're, they're, they're blinded by the false prophet. They, they believe that false prophet is telling the truth. So instead of arguing Bible verses, I go to their prophet and I start showing them, why should I believe this prophet? You know, if he's wrong about all this, why should he be believed when it comes to interpreting Bible passages? So a lot of times I avoid talking about Bible verses because they're just going to believe their prophet because they have total confidence in him. So before I get to that stage, I want to attack the prophet himself so that it starts shaking up their confidence. And that's by God's grace over the years, the Lord has allowed to do a ministry like this for us to lead a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses out of Jehovah's Witnesses. It still takes the, the Spirit of God to lead someone to Christ himself. Because a lot of times, even a person who doesn't come to the Lord 
can see the, the real problems in their own literature. And well, I used to go to them and tell them, well, he's telling me this and he's telling me that, and what do I tell him? And they will give me another watchtower of another little book, or at the end they keep telling me, don't talk to him anymore, he's, yeah, yeah. he's not a good person, don't talk to him anymore. But at that time, I was totally torn. Mm -hmm. And I just You'd already been me too messed up <laughs> to back out now because you needed some of this resolved in your mind. Yeah, I you couldn't just, we were too far into it to where you could just, oh, I'm just going to forget everything I heard, all the stuff I saw, and just go back to these people and just read their, their little books and magazines. So then it just came to where you and me are discussing, and we're moving actually into biblical topics and discussing it from, but by, by then, I think enough of your confidence in the watchtower had been messed up because of what we were, you were seeing. Yes. And in fact, during that time, do you remember, do you remember this? I, I almost never miss a chance with the Jehovah's Witnesses with this. Do you remember this book, Communication with the Spirit World of God oh, yeah, by I Johannes Grieber? Yes. You yes. See? And then over here is another book by him, uh, which is his version of the New Testament. And then here, uh, and there's old Griever right there. And of course, it turns out Griever's wife was a spirit medium. The following is a short clip from our video called Who's Knocking? Number Two, Jehovah's Witnesses, Hidden History, Spiritism, Racism, Doctrines of Demons. If you want much more historical data concerning Jehovah's Witnesses history, please check out this video. So in their translation, they, they translate it, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God, small g, Tran equating Jesus with an, just another created angel. And they do believe he's a uh, Michael the Archangel. But uh, what they've done in their books and in references, when they quote somebody to support their doctrine, because almost every major translation translates the Word was God. And nobody translates it a God, except they found, they found this book, and also Benjamin Wilson's emphatic, emphatic dialogue, but I bet even that doesn't help that much. I could explain that, but uh, with time running out, I'm just trying to race ahead here. But they quote this guy, and I was showing this also to the Jehovah's Witnesses as we were getting further away from my briefcase <laughs> yesterday. Uh, they quote this guy in many of their publications. In fact, I was asking them to check out their own re references. All these Watchtower publications quote Johannes Grieber, not only on this verse, but other passages where they have a kind of a peculiar doctrine or change in the Bible that teaches just a certain way. And they go to this man to give them scholarly support, okay, like he's some kind of expert. But uh, what we're going to find out about this guy, okay, how, wh why do they quote this guy in so many places, particularly in John 1.1? It's Johannes Grieber's, New and when they write in their book, they mention he's a Roman Catholic priest. They don't say anything else much about him, but... He, he translated the entire New Testament, the whole New Testament, and this particular translation is the one they go to to back up their translation because, see, in John 1.1, 1, 1, and I showed this to him yesterday, they translated just the same. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was a God. So, it, you know, if you see that red thing there, that shows they translate just like the Jehovah's Witnesses. That's why I like to quote this guy. But now, how did he come up with this Bible? He came up with this Bible, as he says here, after talking about contradictions of the Bible and you can't trust the Bible, he says, well, we need to come up with a reliable translation. So he's going to come up with one. He says, at times he was given the correct answers in large illuminated letters and words passing before his eyes. Other times he was given the correct answers during prayer meetings. His wife, a medium of God's spirit world, was often instrumental in conveying the correct answers from God's messengers to Pastor Grieber. So in other words, he translated the whole New Testament through his spiritistic medium wife or through large letters and words passing before his eyes or in prayer meetings. And as you go through here, all kinds of changes. Here's the Lord's here's how he does the Lord's Prayer. Of course the Jehovah's Witnesses don't go along with this one, so they don't quote it in their in their books. But it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy spirit world come to us. Let's see what the the, the spirits told him about God. And it'll be very interesting and we're gonna clue on this says, God has a shape or an organism, page 261. God is not omnipresent. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that God is everywhere. They believe he's out 
you know, somewhere in a set place. Today's Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe he's in the star system Pleiades, but they believe he's in a set place somewhere called the throne of God. But uh, they still don't believe he's just omnipresent, okay? Very similar teachings here. God does not have perfect foreknowledge. The Jehovah's Witnesses, I think it was uh, early Watchtower publications, taught, well, God is not all-knowing because, after all, there's just too much to know. <laughs> so you can't know everything. Uh, and that's what these spirits have taught Pastor Grieber, who in this book influenced uh, uh, Watchtower teaching. Uh, God is not a trinity. Oh, and this is page 265. 265 has a lot of their doctrine. Only the Father is God. There is no hell. Christ is not God, but the greatest created spirit. Jesus did not rise physically from the dead. Okay. And here he talks about how it's important to get hold of inspirational mediums for <laughs> further knowledge on God. Of course, that's just a... Uh, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses say that they're the medium of God. They're the only true channel. You remember, uh, 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 what's her name, uh, that lady that wrote the book uh, Dancing in the Light and Out on a Broken Limb, or I don't know, Shirley, Shirley MacLaine. She says uh, channeling is the way to go. Well, they say they're the only true channel. And uh, they're the only medium for God's, I mean, they use these words in the Watchtower. And it's very interesting how it relates in with spirit, medium, occult channeling. And so I'll wrap it up on that. You can see the similarities. This is really occultic doctrines of demons. I mean, right down the line. And I'm saying, if you know how to refute Jehovah's Witnesses on not only biblical doctrine in, in their history, but then you're pretty much set for all these other false religions out there because the Jehovah's Witnesses have doctrines of demons. Here's a reference to Johannes Grieber by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in their book, Aid to Bible Understanding, on page 1669, 1971 edition on the lower left-hand column. Quote, a translation by a former Roman Catholic priest, Johannes Grieber, 1937 edition, renders the second appearance of the word God in the sentence as a God. As usual, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Jehovah's Witnesses references Johannes Grieber as an authority on how to do New Testament translations. Right down the line. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I appreciate it. And there's other materials up here if you'd like to get your hands on some more tracks or information. It's all free. Thank you a lot. Are doctrines of demons synonymous with doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses? Doctrines of demons are mentioned in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The following are direct quotes from a demon through spirit medium, Johannes Grieber, who is used by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Number one, Jesus Christ is not God. And your reference for that from Grieber's book is right there. Jehovah only is God, the Father. Once again, another quote from Grieber's book, Communication with the Spirit World. Pages 331, 333, 328, and 302. Three, Jesus Christ is a created being. Once again, from Grieber's book, page 301. Michael is a God. And this comes from Dictionary of Angels by Gustav Davidson. Five, Christ's body was not resurrected. Once again, Grieber's book covers this. Page 385. Six, body of Jesus was dematerialized. Grieber, page 385. Seven, there is no eternal hell. Grieber, page 379. Eight, higher powers of Romans 13 are not the earthly governments. Grieber's book, Communication with the Spirit World, pages 414 and 415. Nine, the Bible is not inspired or dependable. That's coming from Grieber's The New Testament by Johannes Grieber, page 15. Ten, the Christian church today is not preaching the gospel. 
And once again, that's from his Communications with the Spirit World, page 426. Now, when we look at the doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses, we find an eerie similarity. One, Jesus Christ is not God. Coming from the Watchtower book, The Word, Who Is He? Page 40. Two, Jehovah only is God, the Father. That's from their book, Jehovah, page 8. Jesus Christ is a created being. That's coming from their book, Aid to Bible Understanding, page 918, which we've already shown in this video production. Michael is a God, Aid to Bible Understanding, page 1152. Five, Christ's body was not resurrected. And this is found in two Jehovah's Witness books. Time is at hand, page 128, and things in which it is impossible for God to lie, page 355. Six, body of Jesus was dematerialized. That's from the Jehovah's Witness book, Time is at hand, page 129. Seven, there is no eternal hell. From the Jehovah's Witness book, Is this life all there is, page 96. Eight, Higher powers of Romans 13 are not earthly governments. This is coming from the Watchtower magazine, January 15, 1946, page 27. Nine, the Bible is not inspired or dependable. This is coming from the foreword of the Jehovah's Witness book, Kingdom Interlinear, page 7. Ten, the Christian church today is not preaching the gospel. And this comes from Pastor Russell's, who is the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, Pastor Russell's book, Finished Mystery, page 485. Another important witnessing tip for those of you who encounter Jehovah's Witnesses is to avoid playing Bible ping pong with them unless you are fully prepared. Most JWs can turn a typical once-a-week churchgoer into a doctrinal pretzel within 10 minutes. JWs are trained to play on the ignorance of their listeners so they can promote their propaganda literature. Don't fall into this trap. It is better to undermine the reliability of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society so you can leave doubts in their minds. I call this the, quote, seeds of destruction, end quote, which may eliminate in their minds the false prophet that is blinding them. Here are some typical examples of what may happen in a Bible ping pong match with Jehovah's Witnesses. By the way, the following examples are coming from my copy of Walter Martin's Cult's Reference Bible, a King James Version, which shows the arguments of the Jehovah's Witnesses and other cultists, and then how the Christian can respond and refute them. For more about this Bible, see my video on YouTube called Walter Martin's Cult's Reference Bible, a perfect street witnessing tool for Christian evangelists. Okay, as we see here, we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 28. And as you look down to the bottom of the page, you see where it says chapter 28, verse 18. And then you've got J.W. says. So here in this Bible, it'll tell you what the J.W. will say about a certain verse. In this case, the J.W. says, If Jesus were given all power, then there was a time when he did not have all power, thus showing that he was not God. And of course, the Christian response to that is, The power spoken of here may not refer to his power as being God, since he never ceased being God. Although he took on the additional nature of man, that's found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. As the context bears out, the power referred to in this verse is the power passed to the disciples, which enabled them to win converts among the nations. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And as you see there, okay, looking up at Matthew 28, 18, and going on into 19 and 20, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Cross-reference that to John 17, 5. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost found on the next page. Okay, going back to the other page. Okay, so now looking at Matthew 28, 19, the Christian response as well to the Jehovah's Witnesses in this case, these words signify that a person is baptized into the very reality of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, i.e. the reality of God as Trinity. The Greek preposition ice means into and denotes that the disciples were to baptize converts into the dynamic life of God as Trinity. A person therefore shares the fullness of fellowship with the members of the Trinity. Baptism was therefore by the authority of Jesus. That found also in Acts 4, 7. And of course, there's a lot more, much more I could say on that. But as we look at this reference page, you see understanding the Trinity and you have all the things found there. Revealed in the Old Testament, revealed in the New Testament. The Trinity raises Jesus from the dead. There's one God. The Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. All your references are there. And naturally, of course, as a consequence of this, Satan attacks the truth of the Trinity. All right. This is just one example of fighting Jehovah's Witnesses on the very nature of God himself, which would be the Trinity. Another battleground passage is Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. And this is important when dealing with, with Jehovah's Witnesses because they argue that Jesus is not God. But when we look in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, it, talking about Jesus, it says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You get your cross references, Hebrews 1, verses 4 and 6, John 5, 23. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. It was made in the likeness of men. And you have your cross references there. And as we go down the page, we find a key passage here in Philippians chapter 2, 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. That's kurios in the Greek to the glory of God the Father. And of course, this is a direct reference, as you can see there, to Isaiah 45, 23. And even the Jehovah's Witnesses' own kingdom interlinear betrays this fact in, uh, on, on page 18 of their interlinear translation. Here in Isaiah 45, 23, we know this is God speaking because right ahead of that, you see in verse 22, it says, For I am God, there is none else. And then in verse 23, it says, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. So God's saying that unto him, that's God, every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to swear unto God. But we see that the same situation is applied to Jesus in Philippians 2.11, meaning that Jesus is God. Okay, but I could go on in this, but as you see at the bottom of the page, Christian response, being in the form of God denotes that Christ had the essential characteristics of God. The Greek literally means never ceasing to be in the form of God. It has nothing to do with anything physical, such as bodies. The mind we are to have is the mind of humility, verses 1 through 11, and not of deity. cross reference that to 2 Corinthians 8 9. Now, hopefully from seeing all this, you're getting an idea what it's like to play Bible ping pong with Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, another favorite passage of Jehovah's Witnesses they'll no doubt bring up is Colossians chapter 1. Here we have in verse 15, they'll usually go to this passage. It says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Now, here they're trying to say firstborn means God created Jesus first. And so he was the first creature that was made by Jehovah God. And so they'll go to that passage to argue that point. Of course, forgetting a lot of key essentials. And as you see it down in the bottom of the page, uh, that's what J.W. say. This proves that Jesus was the first one to be created by Jehovah God. Firstborn means first created. The Christian response, though, is in verse 16, we read that by Christ all things were created. Without grammatical justification, the Jehovah's Witnesses translation added the word other to the text, reading all other things. Therefore, Christ himself cannot be a created thing. 
The meaning of the title firstborn is made clear when we understand its use in the Hebrew culture. Because the firstborn son was customarily the heir, the term firstborn became associated with the meaning of heir, or the one with the right to rule the preeminent one, even when the one who was the heir was not the one who was born first. And you have all your Bible references there. Paul is saying that Jesus Christ is the heir of all creation and thus goes on to say that all things were created for him. Colossians 1, 16, cross-reference that to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4. And of course, there's many other notes there. People can freeze frame the video so they can, if they want to read these additional notes and references, they're most welcome to do so. Now we look at Hebrews chapter 1. We want to look at verse 6 first, though. It's talking about Jesus. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And this is not obeisance, as it says in uh, the Jehovah's Witness translation of the Bible, but it's actually the word for worship. And as we look at, and there's a reason for that. When you look at verse 8, it says, But unto the Son, it's talking about Jesus, and the one talking is God himself, But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, here it's a clear statement that Jesus is God, and even God himself declares that Jesus is God <laughs> right there. And uh, you have further references and things to go along that route. But uh, this is just some ammunition for those playing Bible ping pong with the Jehovah's Witnesses. But I, I'm hoping I'm getting the point across that you have to be prepared. You have to be ready. You have to know what you're doing to play this particular game with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Of course, it's important to know what the Word of God says when you're dealing with false prophets because they do rely on ignorance. Okay, I'll, I'll finish this little quick lesson up with a reference from Revelation chapter 21. Now, in verse 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the new heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now, if you look down at the bottom of the page, it says under chapter 21, verse 1, J.W. says, If all of the faithful ones are in heaven, then who is left to dwell on the new earth? Actually, only 144,000 will be in heaven. The rest will be on the paradise earth. This is what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. They, they believe only the best of the Jehovah's Witnesses, 144,000 of them, are going to get to be in this new heaven. All the rest of the Jehovah's Witnesses that aren't so good as these 144,000, well, they'll have to settle for this... Uh, this new earth, this paradise on earth. So as we read the response to this here, we have heaven is the dwelling place of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. In Revelation 21, 2 and 3, the tabernacle of God descends to the new earth and God dwells with its inhabitants. Heaven and the new earth will merge into one dwelling place. All the redeemed will go to heaven. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 which will become one with the new earth. So there's your Christian response, and there's plenty of other details listed on this page. But it shows how Jehovah's Witnesses can take just one verse, like in this case, chapter 21, verse 1 of Revelation, and suddenly make it into a situation where, oh, there's this place for really good, super great Jehovah's Witnesses, and the rest of the not-so-great Jehovah's Witnesses go to this other place. It's a total perversion of the text. You have to know what the Word of God says, understand it to play this Bible ping pong game with them. And if you're not up to that level, then it's easier to stick with destroying their prophet. And she, through her spirit medium uh, 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 interpretation, uh, he, he did the whole Bible through her interpretation of these spirits that are talking to her. Of course, that's pure occultism, yes. and it's demonic. And uh, here, here, for instance, right here, you got the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. He interprets it uh, through his spirit medium wife. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy spirit world come to us, thy will be done in the beyond and on earth. Give us this day our bread for tomorrow. Forgive us our offenses as we too forgive those who have offended against us. So now all of a sudden there's a spirit world involved in the Lord's Prayer. And over here, ask for the truth 
and it will be given to you, seek God, and you will find him knock at the gate of God's spirit world, and it will be open to you. For whoever asks for the truth receives it. Whoever asks God finds him. And to him who knocks at the gate of God's spirit world, it is open. So he translates the whole Bible, New Testament, through his spirit world wife, the medium. And uh, this whole book's all about that, uh, this stuff. Going to spirits and mediums, which is condemned by the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves. I know. But, their Bible. but do you remember, you may not after all these years, do you remember how he ties in with the Jehovah's Witnesses? So it's been so many years, you may not know. This guy is a Roman Catholic priest. Yes. This Grieber guy isn't a, Ro a Jehovah's Witness. But why do his books and his spirit medium wife mean such a, make such a big deal in correlation to Jehovah's Witnesses? Now, you know what John 1.1 1, 1 says? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Big G. Yes. Jehovah's Witnesses don't like that because they believe Jesus is not God. He's just an archangel Michael created by Jehovah God, mm -hmm. the only real God. Mm -hmm. So they can't have a verse like that that's going to mess them up. But unfortunately for them, the Greek doesn't support their interpretation because in their New World Translation, they put, in the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, and the Word was a God. A God. So they got a real problem. So how are they going to verify that they got some scholarship to back up their interpretation of John 1 1? A God. You're not going to get it from any of the, the, the Greek scholars, the biblical scholars. It's all set in stone. It's God. The Greek makes no doubt about it. And I can prove that even from their own kingdom interlinear, which I, the purple, Peter, purple people leader, which I showed a while ago. They use Greber because he translates John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So throughout their literature, Watchtower magazines, Awake magazines, I think it's even in their, their book here, Aid the Bible Understanding, but we don't have time. We're running out of time. We've got less than five minutes to finish this show uh, under our time constraints here. But like I said, people can watch our playlist on YouTube, that I've already mentioned, uh, and get all the information they need in extensive detail, more than we can cover here. But I'm showing you back then that, look, they're translating this verse because, because of, of this, this guy. <laughs> He's a Roman Catholic priest translating the Bible with the spirit medium wife, which even the Jehovah's Witnesses say is demonic. But they know people usually don't check footnotes. And it looks cool in the footnotes to have somebody, oh, we're quoting the New Testament by Johannes Grieber, who verifies this translation. And they're thinking, well, you know, how many people actually go and look up the book? Oh, yes. mm -hmm. See, and that was another knife in the heart, because if they're wrong there, where else are they wrong? You know, their, their, their New World Translation is wrong and all the rest of it. So we're, we're down to two minutes. So uh, in a nutshell, I'll wrap up the show. Speak to our audience for a minute, how this all ended up, and uh, give a word of advice to any people that are studying with Jehovah's Witnesses right now. Um, well, for me, by the grace of God, it ended up that I visit Bay Spring Chapel, and yeah. I learn about um, God and who He is and uh, good theology. And I was able to just ask my dad for forgiveness and get out of that sin as many others. And I think that when you're standing with the Jehovah Witnesses, um, you have to be open to listening to other people because they're all so very nice and they seem so very knowledgeable that they can really fool you. But um, they're not teaching you the truth. They're teaching you their truth. And so um, if you if you um, worry about your eternal life, then it's very important to see other sources, Christian sources. Very well said. Uh, thank you for that. She, uh, as I, I, we have a newsletter that's free to anybody who wants to get their hands on it. Uh, this has helped a lot of people over the years. It's called Jehovah's Witnesses, Deceived Deceivers. So those Jehovah's Witnesses that come to your door, they're sincere people. They really are believing what they're trying to teach, and they think it is the truth, and it will lead to life eternal. Uh, the only problem is they have been deceived. And then because they're deceived, they go out and deceive other people, not even realizing it while they're sincere about it. 
And that's the, the trouble. So there's plenty of resources available. Like I said, check our playlist on YouTube. Uh, contact our ministry. Email us at the email address on your screen. We'll send you free newsletters and tracks and articles that we have here. No charge at all. We don't do this for the money. Uh, but uh, with that, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us You're as our guest. It's wonderful. And this time we got it in English That's instead right. of Spanish. That helps me. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, But uh, with that, I want everybody out there to know there's lots of Jesuses. The Jehovah's Witnesses say Jesus is the uh, Archangel Michael. The Mormons say that Jesus is the spirit brother of the devil. Uh, the Muslims say Jesus is a Muslim prophet who's going to come back on the, in the end times and kill all the Christians and Jews. Everybody has a different version of Jesus, but we want to know what the Bible says about who Jesus is. That's your only real standard, and the Jehovah's Witnesses don't follow that standard. So if they come to your door, they're nice people, be nice to them, but you need to get other, like Chi was saying, find another way of getting the information you need to deal with false doctrines and false prophets. So with that said, just remember, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So you've got to have the true and correct Jesus, not a false Jesus, as mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, which says there's another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. And that's exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses bring to you when they come to your front door. So beware of false prophets, Matthew 7, 15. With that, God bless you all. Thank you for being with us. I'm Larry Wessels with Chiki Estrada, my good friend and sister in the Lord. Join us again next time for another edition of Christian Answers Presents. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Those viewers who are still with us can stay tuned and see our full version video called Spanish Version. False Jehovah's Witness Doctrines, Las Doctrinas de los Testigos de Jehovah, with Chiki Estrada from the early 1980s, as she and friend Anita Martinez described their escape from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Saludos en el nombre de nuestro Señor y Salvador Jesucristo. Soy Patricio López para Evangelismo El Amanecer. En el Ministerio del Evangelismo El Amanecer, Predicamos a Cristo Jesús y las buenas nuevas de la salvación que hay en Él. Para los que estén interesados en recibir literatura que concierne con enseñanzas bíblicas, sin costo alguno, solo escriba a Evangelismo el Amanecer. Repetiremos esa dirección durante la presentación. El tema de hoy es, ¿son los, las creencias de los testigos de Jehová verdaderamente bíblicas? Tengo a Chiqui Estrada y Anita Martínez, ex estudiantes con los testigos de Jehová, queremos enfatizar que esta presentación no es hecha con ninguna malicia, con alguna malicia ni con odio a los testigos de Jehová, sino por el amor a Cristo queremos hablar de la palabra de Dios. En Gálatas 4.16 leemos que dice la palabra de Dios. Me he hecho, pues, vuestro enemigo, por deciros la verdad. Anita, ¿me puedes decir cómo llegaste a estar involucrada con los testigos de Jehová? Bueno, pues, este, ellos uh, vinieron a mi casa una mañana, y como yo ya los conocía, no los conocía a ellos, pero conocía de los testigos de Jehová cuando estaba chica, llegaban a casa, y este me, este, me gustaba agarrarles eh, la atalaya, los okay. magazines que ellos vendían, aunque mis padres no querían dejarlos entrar. Yo pensando que si nosotros éramos cristianos, entonces no deberíamos de cerrarle la puerta a alguna persona que viniera hablando en el nombre de Dios. Así es que yo comencé a estudiar con ellos, este... Hace como dos años. Dos años. Chiqui, ¿qué tipo de enseñanzas tenías tú sobre lo que era la Palabra de Dios? Yo nací y fui criada en un hogar católico y no tenía mucha idea de la Palabra de Dios. Solo iba a misa y oía lo que el sacerdote decía, pero no leía la Biblia para nada. 
Anita, ¿cómo, ¿cómo cuando creciste tú ibas creciendo? ¿Qué, qué eran tus, tus creencias religiosas, vamos a decir? Bueno, este, yo como este, también fui creada en una casa católica, aunque mis padres, bueno, decían que eran católicos, pero no atendían a, a misa. Uh -huh. este, yo comencé a ir a, a misa con unas amigas que me invitaban. Entonces, este, yo creí en Dios, este, pero oía lo que el sacerdote decía y no, también no me, me buscaba las escrituras. Este, no leía la Biblia, nomás solo iba a misa y era todo. Lo que escuchaba. ¿Qué fue, Chiqui, tu situación en que estabas? ¿En qué situación estabas cuando empezaste a estudiar? con los testigos de Jehová? Bueno, era un momento en mi vida que uh, sentía la necesidad de saber más acerca del Creador y uh, estaba un poco confundida porque las doctrinas cristianas a veces son difíciles de entender. Uh, ellos empezaron a llegar a mi casa a visitar y me parecieron muy amigables. Uh, me parecieron que conocían mucho de la Biblia y como la Biblia me interesaba mucho en ese momento, uh, decidí que nos podríamos visitar con frecuencia. Anita, ¿qué fue lo que más te sorprendió o te, te arrimó o te hizo arrimarte a los testigos de Jehová? Bueno, como te digo, yo este, creí en Dios y en ese tiempo me sentía... Este, que quería estar cerca de Él. Este, yo comenzaba a agarrar la Biblia a leer y a veces me sentía que Dios estaba muy cerca de mí y a veces me sentía que Él estaba muy lejos. Uh -huh. y, y como yo todavía iba a misa, este, cuando daban la palabra de Dios, en veces este, me quedaba queriendo ir más y, y era uh -huh. todo, no, no era mucho lo que me decían. Uh -huh. Así que cuando ellos vinieron a preguntarme cómo es, cómo, qué pensaba yo de la situación de este mundo y cómo estaba, pues yo dije, pues está muy mal, se mira mucho crimen, mucho odio. Y entonces ellos me dijeron que si sabía yo que todo esto iba a terminar muy pronto y que viviríamos en un paraíso y eso para mí se, se miró muy, muy bonito. Muy bien, claro. Y este, Chiqui, en tu mente, ¿cómo comparabas tú a los testigos de Jehová con otras religiones? ¿Alguna vez, después de que el Señor te abrió esta hambre para que lo buscaras, cómo mirabas tú a, a ellos? ¿Qué era lo que tú sentías? ¿Qué era lo que pensabas de ellos en comparación a otras religiones? Bueno, yo no tenía muchas religiones con que compararlos a Patricio porque... Nací en una casa católica y, como te dije, íbamos a, a misa, pero no aprendíamos mucho. Y a mí me parecieron muy buenos porque la verdad era porque no tenía con quién compararlos. Entonces todo lo que me decían me parecía fantástico y, y decidí que seguiría estudiando con ellos y aprender más acerca de sus doctrinas y de su organización. Chiqui, ¿me podrías decir cómo salieron ustedes de la organización? Um, bueno, una amiga me presentó a Larry Wessel y él um, vino a platicar conmigo acerca de, de los testigos de Jehová y de su organización. El día que yo hablé con él, hablamos de las doctrinas cristianas Uh, que yo no quería aceptar porque eran diferentes a lo que los testigos de Jehová me habían enseñado. Uh, yo le insistía a Larry que él uh, tenía problemas en entender las Escrituras y también que su Biblia no, no era muy buena, porque yo había aprendido que la organización Atalaya, o sea, el, la Watchtower, mm -hmm. uh, habían traducido la mejor versión de la Biblia con... Uh, autores anónimos, que quiere decir a gente desconocida. Así fue como, como empecé a, 
a darme cuenta uh, que la organización uh, tiene muchas cosas que son un misterio para, para la gente, uh, hasta para los mismos uh, testigos de Jehová. Empezamos a, a hablar de la organización y hubo cosas que me impresionó muchísimo, como las personas que ellos, uh, a los que ellos se refieren para apoyar sus doctrinas. Uh, estoy pensando ahorita en Johannes Greber, uh -huh. que es, uh, era un sacerdote alemán que salió de la iglesia católica y cuando estaba fuera de esta hizo una traducción de la Biblia y en la primera página en su dedicación él habla de cómo él tradujo, cómo fue él inspirado para esta traducción habla de su esposa que es una espiritista que lo ayudaba a hacer la traducción también ha, habla de letras uh, iluminadas que pasaban enfrente de sus ojos uh, y le decían que era lo que tenía que poner. Uh, si tú me permites, hay una, hay una traducción que me llamó mucho la atención y es la traducción de El Padre Nuestro. Él lo tradujo de la manera siguiente, Padre Nuestro en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Vénganos tu mundo espiritista, hágase tu voluntad en el más allá y en la tierra. Danos hoy el pan de mañana, perdónanos nuestras ofensas como nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. Esto a mí me impresionó muchísimo porque uh, yo acababa de estudiar con los testigos de Jehová el capítulo número 10 de su, de su libro que se llama Puedes Vivir uh, en, en la Tierra, el Paraíso, para siempre. Es un libro rojo con los que los testigos de Jehová estudian. Uh -huh. Y la, el capítulo habla de hechicerías y espiritismo y cómo esas cosas uh, no son de Dios. Uh, yo insistí que, que esto no podría ser cierto, pero Larry tenía la copia del libro con él y me dejó que leyera la dedicatoria y lo que la dedicatoria decía y no pude no pude negarme a mí misma después de que verifiqué toda esta información uh, yo sé que si ustedes uh, les están interesados podrían escribir a, a Day Spring Evangelism y la dirección ya se les fue dada y se les dará otra vez y ellos les pueden mandar fotocopias de la dedicatoria de este libro también hay una institución de Johannes Greber uh -huh. eh, que se llama Johannes Greber Foundation uh -huh. y el número es 139 Hillside Avenue, Teaneck, New Jersey, 07666. Y si ustedes escriben ahí, ellos le mandarán información de cuánto vale la copia y puedes comprar una copia para verificar toda esta información. Es muy interesante oír de uh, Johannes Weber y este, las enseñanzas las, de los fundadores, de los testigos de Jehová. Uh, Anita, ¿qué fue lo que pasó en tu vida que te apartó a ti de los testigos de Jehová? Bueno, yo este, ya conocí a Chiqui. Este, una vez me la encontré en el reino, el salón del reino y me dio mucho gusto verla allí porque yo a toda persona, incluyendo mi familia, le quería decir lo que los testigos decían. Yo creía todo lo que ellos me decían. En, pero cuando Chiqui vino, como yo ya tenía dos años de estar estudiando y ella sabía que yo estudiaba con ellos, entonces vino Chiqui muy preocupada a decirme, Anita, tengo que hablar contigo sobre los testigos. Y yo, este, pues no muy bien quería, porque sí. como este, ellos, una cosa que te dicen es que no deberías de, de dejar, este, 
o digo, de leer otros libros o que te den otras explicaciones ya sobre lo que ellos te dicen. O sea, la autoridad en, 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 en lo que debe ser la palabra de Dios está en ellos. Sí. Ellos son la autoridad. ¿verdad? Es verdad. Este, yo una vez, eh, cuando todavía estudiaba, este, les pregunté o les hice una pregunta de algo, no me recuerdo qué, pero les dije, yo leí en este libro, ¿acaso este tema? Y entonces ellas me dijeron, pero tú ya no necesitas estar leyendo ninguna otra cosa. Si tú sabes que esta organización es la verdadera, entonces no, no, no necesitas. ¿Y de esa manera querían controlar tus, tu mente? Sí, pero como te digo, vino Chiqui y ella quería compartir conmigo lo que había aprendido con Larry, lo que él le había dicho. Y yo empecé a leer muchos libros que me daban información acerca de las doctrinas de los testigos. Yo ni sabía que había estos libros. Yo nomás me basaba lo que ellos me decían, este, porque los miraba muy honestos. Este, yo pensaba que ellos me estaban diciendo la verdad. Entonces, este, cuando vino Chiqui, yo me puse muy preocupada ya hasta ni quería creer en nada. Dije, si esta no es la verdad, entonces, ¿cuál es? Y uh -huh. dije, yo ya no quiero creer en nada. Pero Chiqui dijo, mira, vamos a hablar con Larry. Uh -huh. Y entonces, yo me puse a leer estos libros y en veces los dejaba, los aventaba y decía, no puede ser, no puede ser. Pero entonces agarré un libro y te, qui te quisiera leer unas cosas de este libro. El libro se llama este, What About Jehovah's Witnesses, escrito por Gordon Lindsay. Uh -huh. Algo en la última página me hizo, gracias a Dios, poner mi vida en Cristo. Él traduje el párrafo del libro y dice así. Viva conforme al libro que es la Biblia. Crea en él evangelio simple. La sangre de Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que limpia de todo pecado. Debes volver a nacer solamente si el hombre nace del agua y del Espíritu puede es, estar, entrar al reino de Dios. De modo que si alguno esto a, a Cristo, perdón, de modo que si alguien está en Cristo es una nueva criatura. Las cosas viejas pasaron, he aquí todos, todas son hechas nuevas, porque en él fueron creados todas las cosas. Y él es antes de todas las cosas y todas las cosas en él subsisten. Yo afirmo que Jesucristo es Dios y él él es el único Dios que conocemos. Y el hombre que niegue su potestad no es de arriba, sino de abajo. Vengan como Tomás vino, mirando las llagas hechas por los clavos y la llaga de la espada. Caigan a sus pies y adórenlo como su Salvador, diciendo, mi Señor y mi Dios. Qué hermosa palabra que hemos oído de uh, capítulo 3 de Juan este estoy un poco conmovido por lo que acabas de leer uh, quisiera seguir con el tema este de que si son las creencias de los testigos de Jehová verdaderamente bíblicas y uh, quisiera que Chiqui me dijeras un poco de las profecías que los testigos de Jehová han hecho y cómo, cómo han salido en, en la historia. Bueno, como te decía yo en esta conversación con Larry Wessel, um, yo le insistí a él que los testigos de Jehová debían de ser las personas elegidas por Dios, porque a ellos era a los únicos que Jehová les uh, daba información acerca del futuro del mundo. Um, y yo le dije que yo sabía que Jesucristo había venido al mundo desde 1914 uh, en una forma invisible. 
y que la batalla de Armagedón o Armagedón y otras cosas como el retorno de Abraham y de Isaac, Jacob y de los profetas fieles estaba cerca. Um, fue entonces cuando Larry me dio información uh, que él ha recolectado de las revistas, de, de la revista Atalaya y la revista El Despertar. Um, estas revistas que nosotros vimos están todas en inglés y no, no hemos visto las copias en español, así que para este programa tratamos de traducir uh, las revistas en inglés. Uh, digo esto porque si algún uh, audiente quisiera buscar la información, tendría que buscar en la revista, en la revista Watchtower y en la revista Awaken de la fecha en que, en que hemos dicho. Uh, déjame leerte algunas de las cosas que fueron profetizadas. Uh, en 1889, los testigos publicaron en su libro El tiempo está cerca, Time is at hand, en la página 101, lo siguiente. Ya ha comenzado el gran día de la batalla de Dios Todopoderoso, que terminará en 1914 con la destrucción total de los líderes terrenales. Esta, esta, esto ha sido traducido de la revista en inglés. Por eso, uh, si quieren verificarlo, como dije anteriormente, busquen las revistas uh, en inglés. Uh, después, los testigos en 1918 dijeron, así es que podemos esperar con confianza que 1925 marcará el regreso en la condición humana perfecta de Abraham, Isaac, Jacob y los profetas fieles de la antigüedad, particularmente los que el apóstol menciona en Hebreos 11. Esto lo sacamos del libro Millions Now. Millions Now Living Will Never Die y está en la página 89. También, en 1923, los testigos decían, pensamos que 1925 es definitivamente el año asegurado por las santas escrituras para el retorno de Abraham, Isaac, no, Isaías. Yo he dicho Isaac todo este tiempo y es en realidad Isaías. Abraham, Isaías y Jacob y los profetas fieles de la antigüedad. Los cristianos en estos tiempos tienen más pruebas para asegurarse que lo que no obtuvo para creer en el diluvio. Esto está en la revista Atalaya, o sea, la revista Watchtower, del primero de abril de 1923. Está en la página 106. En 1941, otra vez ellos dijeron, al recibir el regalo, los niños participa participantes se aferraron a él, no como un juguete o un placer pasivo, sino como el instrumento dado por Dios para trabajar eficazmente en los meses que quedaban antes de la batalla del Amagedón. Esto lo encuentras en la revista Watchtower del 15 de agosto de 1941. Otra vez, en 1968, en la revista El Despertar o Awaken de los uh, Testigos de Jehová, sacaron un artículo muy interesante que decía, verdaderamente hubo algunos que en tiempos pasados han predicho el final del mundo, inclusive anunciando fechas específicas. El fin no llegó. Sin embargo, nada pasó. Fueron culpables de profetizar falsamente. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué les faltaba? A esta gente le faltaba la verdad de Dios y la evidencia de que Él estaba usándolos y guiándolos. Esto está en la revista Awaken del 8 de octubre de 1968. Ahora permíteme leer lo que dice San Lucas en el capítulo 21 versículo 8 dice mirad que no seáis engañados 
porque vendrán muchos en mi nombre, diciendo, yo soy el Cristo, y el tiempo está cerca, mas no vay vayáis en pos de ellos. Uh, este artículo de 1968 es muy interesante porque ellos eran las personas que habían hablado del final del mundo y ahora en 1968 decían que otras personas han estado haciendo esto y los acusaban de ser uh, falsos profetas. Entonces, la misma organización estaba diciendo que la, la misma que, que sus mismos uh, fundadores eran, eran falsos profetas. Sí, pero ellos lo hacían de una manera que sonaba como que alguien más ha estado profetizando todas estas cosas uh, que no han sido ciertas. Uh, déjame decirte lo que ellos uh, profetizaron en 1972 en la revista Watchtower. Decía así, identificando el profeta. ¿Tiene Jehová un profeta que ayuda a su gente y les avisa acerca de los peligros y situaciones venideras? Esta pregunta se puede contestar afirmativamente. ¿Quién es el profeta? El profeta no es un hombre, sino un cuerpo de hombres y mujeres. Es un grupo pequeño de seguidores de Jesucristo conocidos como testigos cristianos de Jehová. Por supuesto, es fácil decir que este grupo actúa como un profeta de Dios, pero es otra cosa probarlo. Está en la revista Watchtower del 1 de abril de 1972. Ahora, uh, si tú lees Jeremías capítulo 27, versículo 15, te das cuenta del peligro que corren los cristianos al dejarse engañar por estas gentes. Eh, dice así, Yo no los envié, dice Jehová, y ellos profetizan falsamente en mi nombre, para que yo os arroje y perezcáis vosotros y los profetas que os profetizaron. Cuando ustedes... Um, cuando uno le habla a los testigos de Jehová acerca de todas estas profecías que no se han cumplido, ellos tienen la tendencia de decirte, bueno, pero tú estás sacando cosas viejas y tú estás hablando de cosas que dijimos hace 100 años y hablemos de lo que la institución dice ahora. Pero para probar lo que dice Deuteronomio, capítulo 18, versículo 21, tú tienes que ir al pasado. Ok. Uh, déjame interrumpirte y solo quiero decir que este programa, esta presentación, uh, la hacemos con todo amor para la gente perdida y queremos enfatizar que no lo hacemos con ninguna malicia, pero que queremos hablar de la palabra de Dios y las verdades que hay en ellos para nuestros oyentes uh, una vez más no tenemos ningún odio hacia los testigos de Jehová pero sí quisiéramos que supieran la verdad que está en la Biblia algunas de las cosas que ellos te enseñan es uh, por ejemplo que Jesucristo uh, fue creado Uh, te dicen que Jesucristo uh, no es Dios, pero que es uh, Michael el Arcángel. Uh, también te hablan que Jesucristo uh, no resucitó con su cuerpo, pero que resucitó con um, el Espíritu. Uh -huh. Y te dicen que vino invisiblemente al mundo en 1914. Uh, también hablan del de infierno. Dicen que el infierno uh, es solamente una tumba. Uh -huh. uh, hablan que solo 144 mil personas irán al cielo. Y después uh, la mayoría de gente uh, queda en la tierra, donde será el paraíso. Uh -huh. uh, te dicen también que cuando una persona muere, únicamente deja de existir. Es como un sueño profundo. Uh -huh. Y... La salvación la obtienes con trabajos, 
ellos uh, no creen en la transfusión de sangre, creen que es uh, contra la Biblia, uh, no creen en la cruz, creen en una estaca, o sea, un, un tronco, un, un palo. Uh, uh, bueno, uh, creo que esto es todo lo que yo me recuerdo. Básicamente lo que... Este, dijiste algo que me, me pone a pensar. Dices que los testigos de Jehová no creen que Cristo es Dios. Sí, uh, ellos creen que Jesucristo fue creado. Ajá. Y se basan en la escritura de Colosenses, sí. el capítulo primero, versículo 15, que dice, Él es la imagen del Dios invisible, el primogénito de toda la creación. Cuando ellos... Uh, te enseñan algo, algo como esto, es lógico, porque te dice, ellos mencionan que él es el primogénito, y esto quiere decir que es el primero que nació. Sí. Uh, pero cuando tú um, averiguas en la misma Biblia, te das sí. cuenta que uh, primogénito también quiere decir uh, prominente. Sí, prominente claro. es una persona que está a cargo o que está en mando. De, de algo y, y si tú lo y, y, y si tú lees en, la, en Génesis en la versículo 41 no, disculpa, el capítulo 41 versículo 51 te enseña esto el capítulo dice así y llamó José el nombre del primogénito Menaces Sí. Recuérdate de que el primogénito fue Menaces. Uh -huh. Porque dijo Dios, me hizo olvidar todo mi trabajo y toda la casa de mi padre. En el versículo 52 dice, y llamó el nombre del segundo Efraín. Porque dijo, Dios me hizo fructificar en la tierra de mi aflicción. Así que, uh, basados en lo que acabamos de leer, uh, Manases era el primogénito y Efraín uh -huh. era el segundo hijo. Sí. Ahora si leemos Jeremías, capítulo 31, versículo 9, dice, Irán con lloro, mas con misericordia los haré volver, y los haré andar junto a arroyos de aguas, por caminos derechos, en el cual no tropezarán, porque yo soy a Israel por padre, y Efraín es mi primogénito. Uh -huh. O sea, el, el, um, el que prominente, está, uh -huh. el, que está, el que está a cargo. Entonces, uh, aquí te das cuenta que, que no siempre primogénito quiere decir la primera persona que ha nacido, sí. pero también es un título, es un cargo, sí. es la persona prominente. Ahora, si, si lees uh, Colosenses 1, versículo 15, usando prominente, tiene completamente el sentido que el apóstol Pablo le quiso dar. Él es la imagen de Dios invisible, el prominente de toda la creación. O sea, que él está en mando de toda la creación, uh -huh. no que él ha sido creado. Anita, ¿qué otra cosa dice la Biblia de la divinidad de Cristo? Bueno, como dijo Chique, una cosa que ellos no creen es que Jesucristo es Dios. Y te quisiera leer este, unas escrituras de la Biblia King James uh -huh. y de ahí también de la Biblia de los testigos de Jehová para que mires uh -huh. cómo han este, cambiado. Uh -huh. Sí, bueno, en español es la, la versión Reina Valera, ¿verdad? Sí. Bueno, en San Juan capítulo 1, versículo 1, nos dice... En el principio era el verbo, y el verbo era con Dios, y el verbo era Dios. Ajá. ¿Y ellos cómo lo...? Pero en la Biblia, traducción del Nuevo Mundo de las Santas Escrituras... Sí, que es, el, es la Biblia de los testigos de Jehová. Sí, es la que usan ellos. Entonces allí este mismo escritura nos dice así... En el principio la palabra era, y la palabra estaba con Dios, y la palabra era un Dios. 
Oh, así es que cambiaron la traducción a, a decir que había más que un Dios que... Sí, es que verdad. No, que no era... O sea, no sé, no sé... No o sea, uno, sino, la, lo, sino sí, dos. Se pone la, la cosa un poco... Uh, no muy clara, ¿no? Está sí. un poco confundida. Bueno, y este... Mira, como la Biblia fue traducida de... Bueno, fue escrita en griego primeramente, Ajá. las escrituras. Este, los de la Watchtower Organization no tienen expertos en griego. Y ellos han cambiado esta palabra para que diga la Biblia lo que ellos quieren, lo que ellos quieren decir, lo que uh -huh. ellos creen. Y este, tenemos información sobre esta, como se dice aquí, este versículo, uh -huh. este, donde el doctor Julius Menti, uh -huh. este, les dijo que, hasta les mandó una carta diciendo que ellos no podían hacer esto, que no era, no, bueno, no era, no era una buena traducción, sí, que no era una buena traducción, pero ellos, este, no, no, como quiera siguen, con, con, esa misma con esa misma. ¿Qué más nos dice la palabra de Dios de, de la divinidad de Cristo? Bueno, vamos a San Juan capítulo 5, 18. Y ahí también nos dice, Por esto los judíos aún más procuraban matarle, porque no solo quebrantaba el día de reposo, sino que también decía que Dios era su propio Padre haciéndose igual a Cristo. ¿A Dios? Ajá. O a igual a Dios. Sí, esta es en, en, en la versión Reina Valera, ¿verdad? Sí. La King James. Y la, la Biblia de los Testigos de Jehová. Bueno, dice? en la de ellos también este, dice algo así a causa. Dice, a causa de esto realmente los judíos procuraban no, uh, con más empeño matarlo, porque no solo quebraba el sábado, sino que también llamaba a Dios su propio Padre, haciéndose igual a Dios. Uh -huh. Así que Jesucristo, como sabemos, es el Hijo de Dios. Uh -huh. Entonces aquí los judíos decían que si Él era Hijo de Dios, entonces era igual a su Padre. Uh -huh. este, otra escritura con este sentido es San Juan capítulo 5, versículo 23, y dice para que todos honren al Hijo así como honran al Padre. El que no honra al Hijo, no honra al Padre que lo envió. Así que está muy claro que Jesucristo es Dios. Él recibe la misma o debería de recibir la misma honra que su Padre, como nos dice. Este, te quisiera leer otros sí, versículos donde... En San Juan, capítulo 8, 58, en la King James Version, uh -huh. Reina Valera. la Reina Valera nos dice que Jesús les dijo, De cierto, de cierto os digo, antes que Abraham fuese, yo soy. Sí, y la... Y la... Pero mira lo que nos dice acá en la Biblia de los testigos de Jehová. Muy verdaderamente les digo, antes que Abraham viniese a existir, yo he sido. Ahí le cambian. En lugar de decir yo soy, ellos dicen yo he sido. Uh -huh. y, o sea, este... Una vez más, se vuelve a confundir lo que están diciendo. Sí, porque sí. si vamos a Éxodos capítulo 3, versículo 5, donde dice Dios a Moisés que él, uh -huh. lo mismo, el nombre que se da a él, que yo soy. Uh -huh. 
déjame leerte allí, en 3, Éxodo 3, versículo 14. Y respondió Dios a Moisés, yo soy el que soy. Así que Jesucristo se estaba, estaba diciendo que él era. Que él era Dios. Quien era, sí. Se, este, estaba hablando como si fuera las mismas palabras las que mismas palabras que usó Dios uh -huh. en Éxodos él se estaba uh, usando poniendo en, en los mismos vamos a decir en los mismos en el mismo nivel que Dios sí, ¿sí? pero como te dije que en San Juan versículo o capítulo 8 versículo 58 no decía lo mismo es porque ellos han este, cambiado allí. El, el comité de traducción ha creado un tiempo que no existe. Eh, en la edición del 1950 de su Biblia, donde han traducido a Juan 8.58, como yo he sido, y afirman que es correcto tra traducirlo así en el tiempo perfecto, indefinido en el lenguaje griego. Pero te quiero decir que no existe uh -huh. este tiempo perfecto, indefinido. Uh -huh. Y ahora si tú miras a uh, una Biblia más reciente, no, no te llaman la atención a eso, que es en el perfecto, indefinido. Uh -huh. y este, ¿Me podrías dar otro... Otro texto bíblico donde... Bueno, mira, este quisiera leerte de San Juan, capítulo 10, <coughs> versículos 30 a 33. Uh -huh. Yo y el Padre uno somos. Uh -huh. Entonces los judíos volvieron a tomar piedras para apedrearle. Jesús les respondió, muchas buenas obras os he mostrado de mi Padre, ¿por cuál de ellas me apedráis? Le respondieron los judíos diciendo, por buena obra no te apedreamos, sino por la blasfemia, porque tú, siendo hombre, te haces Dios. Así que los judíos sabían exactamente lo que estaba diciendo Dios, por eso lo querían matar. Sí, para ellos era una blasfemia que un hombre dijera que era igual a Dios. ¿verdad? Sí. Pero la evidencia enseña, uh, lo menos lo que está, hemos leído, uh, que Cristo es Dios. Bueno, otro más te quiero decir antes de, de seguir. También Jesucristo dijo en San Juan capítulo 8, versículo 24, Por eso les dije, morirán en sus pecados, porque si no creen que yo soy ese, morirán en sus pecados. Uh -huh. Así que es muy importante que sepamos y que busquemos <coughs> y saber bien quién es Jesucristo, uh -huh. porque por él somos salvos. Y si no sabes quién es Jesucristo, entonces, pues, todo lo demás que creas no es, no es nada. Si no crees que Él es el que Él es. Este, ¿Me das uh, permiso de leerte otra? Sí, por favor. Este, es la última. Okay. <ríe> en San Juan, capítulo 5, versículos 39... Y 40 nos dice así, escudriñar. escudriñar las escrituras, porque a vosotros os parece que en ellas tenéis la vida eterna, y ellas son las que dan testimonio de mí. Uh -huh. Así es que los testigos saben mucho de las escrituras, pero ahí, aquí mismo nos dice que tú las vas, las leyes, las sabes. Y dice que esas son las que testifican a Jesucristo. Exacto. Chiqui, ¿qué otros, tienes tú algún otro texto bíblico que nos puedas decir? 
Ah, sí, cómo no. Eh, yo tengo aquí que si tú chequeas el uh, capítulo 45 en Isaías, versículo 23, Jehová dice, Por mí mismo he jurado de mi propia boca en justicia ha salido la palabra, de modo que no volverá, que ante mí toda rodilla se doblará, a mí toda lengua jurará. <coughs> Este es uh, Jehová hablando. Uh -huh. Y en la misma Biblia de los testigos de Jehová, en Filipenses capítulo 2, versículo 10, dice, para que en el nombre de Jesús se doble toda rodilla, uh -huh. y de los que están en el cielo, y de los que están sobre la tierra, y de los que están debajo de la tierra, y reconozcan abiertamente toda lengua que Jesucristo es el Señor para la gloria de Dios Padre. Aquí en, en estos uh, versículos tú te puedes uh, dar cuenta que uh, Jehová dice que las rodillas se doblarán para Él y Jesucristo dice que las rodillas se doblarán para Él. Y uh, si ellos no son el mismo Dios, la Biblia estaría hablando de politeísmo, uh -huh. o sea, la adoración de varios dioses. Uh, así que esta es otra escritura que, que nos puede afirmar uh, que Jesucristo y Dios uh, es lo mismo. Uh, yo cuando estuve investigando en la Biblia, uh, me di cuenta también, uh, con la ayuda de, de mi amigo Larry, que Jesucristo y Jehová son llamados por el mismo nombre. Por ejemplo, uh, los dos uh, han sido llamados el primero y el último. Si leemos en la Biblia de los testigos de Jehová, Isaías capítulo 41, versículo 4, dice, ¿Quién, ¿Quién ha estado activo y ha hecho esto llamando a las generaciones desde el comienzo? Yo, Jehová, el primero y con los últimos soy el mismo. Disculpa. Ahora leemos Revelación, capítulo 1, versículo 17. Apocalipsis. Ah, sí, Apocalipsis, pero en la, en la Biblia de los testigos de Jehová, ellos lo llaman Revelación. Oh, okay. por, por eso yo estoy usando la palabra Revelación. Sí. Y dice así, y cuando lo vi, caí como muerto a sus pies, y puso su mano derecha sobre mí y dijo, no tengas temor. Yo soy el primero y el último, y el viviente, y llegué a estar muerto. Pero mira, vivo para siempre jamás, y tengo las llaves de la muerte y del Hades. Del Hades. Del Hades. Por eso, aquí te das cuenta que Jesucristo es llamado el primero y el último. Y en Isaías, Jehová también tenía el mismo nombre, del de primero y el último. Ellos uh, tienen muchas cosas en común. La Biblia te demuestra eso. Por ejemplo, a los dos se les llama creador. Si, leevo, si leemos en Hebreos, capítulo 1, versículos um, del 10 al 12, dice, Y tú al principio, oh Señor, pusiste los fundamentos de la tierra misma, y los cielos, en las obras de tus manos, ellos mismos perecerán, pero tú mismo has de per permanecer continuo, e igual que una prenda exterior de vestir, todos ellos se harán viejos y, y los envolverás igual que una capa. Y si tú te das, o sea que le han dicho que Él hizo el cielo y la tierra, y si te das cuenta en San Juan, Uh, capítulo 1, versículo 3, uh, hablan de Jesucristo y dice, todas las cosas vinieron a existir por medio de Él, y sin Él ni siquiera una cosa vino a existir. Uh -huh. Ahora, como yo sé que no tenemos mucho tiempo en la cinta, uh, también déjame solo decirte los números de los capítulos y los versículos, uh, si la audiencia quisiera chequear. Uh -huh. Se les llama la roca, y esto lo encuentras en Deuteronomios, capítulo 32, versículo 4. Uh -huh. ah, ahí llaman a Jehová 
la roca. Y en Corintios capítulo 10, versículo 4, le dicen lo mismo a Jesucristo. Uh -huh. uh, hay otras cosas muy interesantes uh, de los testigos de Jehová. Por ejemplo, uh, ellos se confunden porque Jesucristo dice que su Padre es mayor que Él. Uh -huh. Y tú te puedes dar cuenta, uh, uno se puede dar cuenta si lee San Juan capítulo 5, versículo 14, uh, que Él um, dice al final de este, por esto los judíos aún más procuraban matarle, pero no porque no solo quebrantaba el día de reposo, sino que también decía que Dios era su propio padre, haciéndose igual a Dios. O sea que su padre no era mayor, de ellos eran iguales. Uh -huh. Quisiéramos este, decirle a nuestros radiodientes que si quisieran uh, recibir escrituras o esta cinta uh, sin algún costo, este, pueden escribir a Day Spring Evangelism, o sea, Evangelismo, el amanecer, en Austin, Texas, eh, apastado postal 43331, en Austin, Texas, 78745. Anita, me quisiera preguntarte, no tenemos mucho tiempo, que me dijeras un poco de... De, sobre la, la honra que se le debe que se le da a Cristo también uh -huh. como a su padre sí, por favor. sí este bueno una escritura que te quiero leer antes de todo esto es uh, en Mateo capítulo 4 versículo 10 donde Jesús está hablando con Satanás y le dice vete Satanás porque escrito está al Señor tu Dios adorarás y a él solo sirverás Así que Dios, este Jesucristo está diciendo que solo a Dios se le debe de dar honra. Pero entonces vamos a ver en otras escrituras donde a Jesucristo se le da honra y Él no la rechaza, sino la recibe. Uh -huh. Este En Juan, San Juan capítulo 17, versículo 5. Dice, ahora pues, perdón, no es esa la que quería leer, sino que San Juan capítulo 20, versículo 28. En contestación, Tomás le dijo, mi Señor y mi Dios. Jesucristo no le dijo a Tomás, no me llames Señor y Dios, porque yo solamente soy el Hijo de Dios. Jesucristo no dio ninguna indicación de que no se le consideraba Dios. Uh -huh. Al contrario, Jesucristo en el mismo capítulo, versículo 29, contestó, porque me has visto, has cre creído, uh -huh. felices son los que ven, los que no ven y sin embargo creen. ¿Me podrías dar este, algunos puntos importantes de que podríamos recordar de los testigos de Jehová? Bueno, este, unos uh, importantes puntos que hay que recordar de los testigos de Jehová es que, en primer lugar, han aceptado la organización como un profeta de Dios. Y puede ver esto en la Atalaya de abril primero, 1972. Este otro punto, han aceptado la organización como el único medio de presentar verdaderas verdades bíblicas. Y aquí puede ver la Atalaya de julio primero, 1973, en página 402. Mm. Uh, ellos también creen que alguien que rechaza la organización en realidad está rechazando a Dios mismo. Y a, este puede ver la Atalaya, febrero 15, 1976, página 124. 
El cuarto punto, ellos creen que nomás la organización puede interpretar la Biblia correctamente. Como individuos, ellos no pueden hacerlo. Mm. Vea la Atalaya de octubre primero, 1967, página 587. El último punto es que tienen una fe implícita en la organización o en el, mega, en el magazine que la organización sí. les uh, envía, la atalaya, en cual ellos creen. Cree. Chiqui, no tenemos mucho tiempo. ¿Quisieras agregar algo? Solo me gustaría decirte algo acerca del Espíritu Santo, porque ellos siempre te dicen, bueno, me estás hablando de, de, de Jehová y de Jesucristo, pero no me has dicho nada del Espíritu Santo. Déjame leer brevemente el capítulo 5, versículo 3 de Hechos, donde dice, Mas Pedro dijo, Ananías, ¿por qué te, ha, te has avalentonado? ¿Por qué te ha avalentonado Satanás a tratar de, con engaño al Espíritu Santo y retener secretamente parte del precio del campo mientras permanecía contigo? No era tuyo y después que fue vendido no continuaba en tu poder. ¿Por qué fue que te propusiste el, un hecho tal como este en tu corazón? No has tratado con engaño a los hombres, sino a Dios. So, aquí te puedes dar cuenta que al principio él dice al Espíritu Santo y después él reafirma que el Espíritu Santo es Dios. Y hay tantos más versículos de esta clase que no les podemos dar ahorita y por eso urgimos a, los, a, a la audiencia que esté interesada que por favor escriban a la, al evangelismo Amén. del amanecer. amanecer. Queremos... Uh, ¿Tenías algo que decir, Anita? Bueno, este, yo quisiera que... Este, tengo mucho amor a, a los testigos porque yo los conocí, como te dije, por casi dos años y es una gente que se aparece muy buena, muy honesta. Y yo siempre me recuerdo de ellos y me da, quisiera con muchas uh, ganas que ellos este, nomás buscaran, que leyeran sobre estas escrituras y se daban cuenta. Gracias. Este, quisiéramos decir que esta presentación no es de ninguna manera hecha con ninguna malicia, solo... Queremos decir que ni tenemos odio hacia los testigos de Jehová. Solo quisiéramos uh, que supieran lo que la palabra de Dios dice. Les damos las gracias por oír nuestro programa. Y este quisiéramos que el Señor los bendiga. En primera de Tosar Vicente 5, 21, dice esto examinándolo todo y reteniendo lo bueno es lo que debemos hacer para que sepamos lo que dice la palabra de Dios ese es un versículo sabiendo que uno debe hacer por buscar a Dios muchas gracias y que el Señor les bendiga check out our websites biblequery.org This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. Historycart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. Muslimhope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. See related videos by tapping or clicking screens.